Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday morning. I hope you're uh, having a great start to your day today. It's going to be a wonderful day today. I'm, I always love Wednesdays. Uh, I love uh, Wednesday nights getting into our Bible study at St. Matthew's. So I hope you'll join us tonight. Uh, we're gonna. You can you can get you can watch our Bible study a couple ways. First, you can go to stmlive.org. Uh, that's where we obviously have all of our all of our videos and, and and all of our different streaming. So we would invite you to visit there. But you can also, if you're on Facebook, um, like our St. Matthew's page. Uh, we'll be throwing it out on Facebook this this afternoon, rather this evening, at 6 p.m. And uh, you can ask questions. You can interact with us. Uh, we we keep our Facebook video up while we're doing Bible study, and we try to answer any questions that come in. So I would invite you to um, join us tonight at, uh, at St. Matthew's for our Bible study uh, at 6 p.m., uh, either on Facebook Live or at stmlive.org. So uh, I look forward to studying God's Word with you uh, tonight. Uh, today we're going to be in Ephesians. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 10 of this passage. Ephesians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, uh, Ephesus, who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his free will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness for our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to, to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on the earth. Um, that, that Paul starts a lot of his letters off with these beautiful praises of worship uh, to Christ. And this is one of the more beautiful ones, is this, this beautiful uh, praise um, that he has uh, to Christ. And I love, for me, one of, the, one of the more beautiful passages in this beautiful passage is, um, is, is where he says in verse 4, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be, to be holy and blameless before him in love. I think that's a, that's a great reminder. Um, sometimes um, we can feel as though too much is up to us. Um, there's there's a great there's a great thing we see quite often in Scripture. We see it very. I think what I like about this this reminds me of something that that is told about Jesus. In Scripture, it says that Jesus Christ was the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. And so I'm I'm used to hearing about Jesus in the before the foundations of the world. But what it said here is for it says just as He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him in love. And of course. We understand that from a free will perspective, that um, he chose us to be saved through Christ, but then gives us the choice of accepting or rejecting that salvation. But here's what I want you to hear. We can, get, we, can, we can devolve into issues over free will and sovereignty and those type of things that Christians have argued about or debated for thousands of years. And I am not smart enough to figure that out. I'm not. There are preachers that are. They're smarter than me. Maybe they've got it straight. I don't. So, um, but what I, what I think is so beautiful and so important about this is we see this beautiful notion here that we're not the first actor in our salvation. What do we mean by that? So in salvation, God is the one who initiates our salvation. God is the one who initiates our conversion. God is the first actor in our salvation. God reaches out to us in grace. And it's God who begins the process of our conversion and the process of our salvation, not us. We respond, but we respond to an offer of grace that Jesus Christ made. We don't save ourselves. We don't earn our salvation. And we also don't even initiate our own salvation but that God is the one who initiates, God is the one who begins, God is the one who starts. We respond, yes, we have a choice to make. We can choose to accept or to reject God's offer. 
We can choose to accept or to reject what God wants to do in our life. We can choose to accept or reject all of God's blessings. Like we can, we, God will not coerce you or force you into salvation. He will give you the choice. He loves you so much that he will give you the choice to reject him. He loves you so much that he will give you the choice to say no to his grace. He loves you so much that he will give you the choice to exercise your free will and reject what he wants to do for you in, in you. That's your choice. You can say no. You can say no to God. You can you can reject his love, reject the scripture, reject, reject you can totally do it. It's your call. He doesn't make you do it. He loves you so much that he lets you decide. But his plan for salvation, his plan for his love was done before even the foundations of the world. He already had a plan for our salvation in mind before the world was even formed. So often, we read scripture and we think about God's acting as reactive. What do you mean by that? Well, okay, I think we see it with Jesus all the time. That's why I love the passage where it says he was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. We, we read scripture and we see God almost befuddled. Like, oh no, they fell into sin. What can I do? I'll give them the law. Oh, that didn't work. Oh no, what do I do now? I'll give them the prophets. Oh no, that didn't work. What do I do now? I guess I better give them Jesus because nothing else works. So we feel like Jesus sometimes was God's last hope. We know scripture is very clear. Jesus was not God's last hope, but Jesus was the plan the entire time. Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Well, for us, God began drawing up for us the plan of salvation before creation was even put into place, before Adam and Eve drew their first breath, before the serpent entered in. God was already, already had set in plan, had set in motion his plan for salvation. So what happens then is we see that, that God is using all of these things. God uses all these things to draw us to himself. But God calls God the first actor. He's going to use all these things to draw us to himself. Even, you know, the power of God is not that God stops bad things from happening. The power of God is that there's nothing that God can't redeem. God can't use. God can't restore. If we'll allow him, God will even use tragedy to teach us. If we'll allow him, God will even use pain to teach us. If we'll allow him, there's nothing that God can't use. For his good, for our good, and for his glory. God is at work in all these things. I'm not saying God has, I'm not, I'm not saying God caused COVID. We have a, we live in a fallen world where there's sin and pain and destruction and death. And that's why scripture says that in, in heaven, there'll be no more sickness, pain, and death. That these things will be no more. But I do believe that if we allow God, if we can still our hearts, we can hear his voice now. And we can grow. Sometimes in exile, we can grow. Sometimes when we're away from where we want to be, we can grow. Sometimes we, when we face new and difficult challenges, we can grow. He put forth this plan of salvation for me and for you before the earth was ever started. God is not reactive to life. God is not reactive to circumstance. God is not caught off guard by any of these things. God is calling us to himself. God is calling us to salvation. God is calling us to life. God is calling us to peace. God is calling us to himself over and over and over and over again in Scripture. Over and over again. Over and over in our life and everything. He has a plan for, our, for us now. He's reaching out to us. He's reaching out to you right now. Reaching out to you. And so for us, the thing that happens is the choice we make. Will we choose to accept or will we choose to, choose to reject? That decision's ours. It's what we choose to do. God loves you so much, he will let you make that decision. He loves you so much, he will let you choose. So today, what will you choose? What will I choose? How will we respond? to God's free offer of grace. Today, my prayer for me, my prayer for you, is that we can choose to accept and follow that grace wherever it leads. Hey, love you guys. Hope you have a great Wednesday. Like I said, join us for Bible study tonight. It's always a great time. Love Bible study. Look forward to being with you. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.